one person would be there to lead the discussion, one person would be there in their job simply would be to call on people. And like in the order that they raise their hands and if we decide to set a time limit for how long a person can talk to keep the time that a person can talk. And um, the other, like the main person who's doing the workshop is there to structure the discussion and say, okay, that's interesting, but that's not on the topic. And we need to stay on this topic before we can move on. And it's either we stay on the topic for a set amount of time or we can stay on the topic till a conclusion is reached. And then you move on to something else. And that's kind of like a way to make a discussion more productive by actually making people whose job it is to keep the discussion on track. And it's kind of like important to talk to keep people from like most people, not most people, but a lot of people when they talk in workshops, they kind of like want to tell their own anecdote and story. And sometimes it's relevant and sometimes it's not. And it's not like a matter of being ruthless and saying cutting people off. It's just a matter of like if we only have an hour to talk about this really big issue, you need to tell people, okay, we'll talk about that later. But we need to talk about this right now, stuff like that. So that's what I was gonna talk about. What, have you been to a, a discussion group where, like you just said about there's a time limit set, and they, you know, said okay. Well, the most of the times that I've been in time limit based discussions are meetings where a decision needs to be reached, especially like if it's run by a collective. You know, like this collective that runs this bookstore. Well, we need to discuss, discuss this controversial issue, but we're not going to be here for five hours. So we're going to set an hour for discussion and ten minutes for the side. But then, I mean, it may be useful, like, here, where we're like, okay, we have an hour. These are the topics we want to talk about. And we'll, we could say, of these five topics, let's choose which of the two are most important to us, and then we'll split the discussion in half. You know, and then at the end of the half hour, we could say, okay, do we want to move on to the next discussion, or do we want to keep discussing this? You know, so it's just having someone pay more attention. I, I like what you said about how a workshop would be something where someone has information they're imparting. Right, or they have a very specific goal. Like, I'm going to teach you all how to say something. Right, like, yeah, well, that's the same thing. It's like they're, yeah. it's more of a, I want to say classroom, but it's more yeah. like a teacher. They know something you don't know about, you're interested, so you go to learn. Whereas a discussion, of course, you're going to learn something, hopefully. Sometimes you learn that discussion group is ridiculous and right. totally organized. <laughs> but um, it's the difference between like if you're gonna have a workshop on how to sew, and there's somebody there with a sewing machine, and they're gonna instruct everybody. It's a little different whether, say, you're gonna have a talk on sexism or something like that. And a lot of people are gonna have plenty of different opinions. Right. Well, I mean, it's kind of like that's why when you start the group, if you're the person leading it, you need to set the ground rules to be like. I'm going to talk about this for a while. This is the way this is going to work. And it's like everybody comes to the group with different expectations and different goals, okay? And if you're the person leading the group, you have to kind of set it out ahead of time and be like, I'm going to talk about this for 10 minutes because that's why I'm organizing this workshop so everyone can hear my opinion, you know? And then we can talk about it. Or this is how we're going to structure it. That so as long as you set the ground rules, it's okay. You should do that first. You should also introduce yourself, which I didn't do because I pretty much know most people. No, I am. <laughs> except for Dave Ed. Ego trip. My full name. So Red Smith. Yeah. Yeah. She got it. No, my my middle name's Edward, so I just go by David. Uh, I'm from Independence. I'm a community college student. <laughs> I play the piano. And, Notice. And, uh, I, I came here because my brother and a couple other people came and they're starting a, a cafe and they're going to have things like a zine magazine library and, uh, and they just wanted to know exactly what goes on to produce one of them and how to run a workshop. That's why. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a... Oh, there's one odd one. Oh, there's one. Really? Only so, one? That's all I wanted to talk about. We have a question. No, we're introducing ourselves. Oh, you can introduce yourself. I mean, I knew everybody, but everybody else. Oh, okay. Oh.
Well, I'm, I'm trying to form, I guess, form my question. Form my question. I know I have a problem in terms of what you're what you're mentioning in discussion groups and workshops. In that, you know, you have to enforce some type of structure. Uh, I'm the type of person who tends to like say, who tends to when I have a point, tends to like talk around, tends to ramble and go off on tangents and say, to that. Um, so you're saying you need structure? I say I need structure. <laughs> that's it. I need. Yeah. Why? Well, that, that's what you're and essentially that's what you're talking about is uh, is discipline. I guess it's discipline. But I guess what my question was, and, and what you're talking in terms of discussion groups, is also having that discipline so that it doesn't descend totally into chaos. Right. Because most of the time, as you said, when you have things like that, it usually gets like people screaming at each other, and right. there's not there's not that area that used to be where you can sit down have, and have different points of view without being hurt without somebody taking it as a personal attack, or there's a level right. of civility in it. I think part of that is because people, like especially within punk, are afraid to take charge because the whole like anti-authoritarian thing, they're yeah. like, well, we're all equals here and stuff, but it's like, you know, there's okay for somebody to like be in control of what's going on. Or just on. more and, knowledgeable of certain subjects. You know, subjects. or even just like, I'm the one, okay. It's, that's why establishing the ground rules is so important. It's like, okay, when we come into the discussion group, it's established that I'm the one leading the discussion group, which means I call on people, or the facilitator calls on people, or I am allowed to cut people off and tell, direct people and stuff like that. And that's why establishing the ground rules is so important. I mean, you don't have to, but then that means when there's a question or when people start talking over each other, there's nobody there to say, oh, you, can't, you need to hold on and let this person talk, or you need to wait, and stuff like that. So it's good. That's why it's good to kind of encourage people to have at least one person there who can take charge. And the other thing is, of course, there's a fine line between yeah, well, you can't be domineering. Being authoritarian. Yeah, John McLaughlin. We gotta get out. Adding structure and being domineering is different. And then the whole, uh, the other thing is the idea of encouraging people to speak out. You know, or like. If you're in a meeting and you have something to say, you need to bring it up because no one else is going to bring it up for you. You know, you can't just wait for someone else to say what you're thinking. You know, so it's kind of like encouraging individuals to speak out. What about the person who won't shut up? Well, you have to be strong. You have to be a strong facilitator. And, like, it helps if when you... Um, <laughs> enter the group and establish the ground rules because then you can use that as a way of like, I'm not taking this personally out against you, but the ground rules that we established earlier say that we need to, because that helps take it away from you against them, you know, so it's like, this is the structure we all agree to by joining this group, so, and plus that. It sounds so authoritarian, the, the <laughs> well, what kind of ground rules? What, no, I mean, just what, like. Is this Robert's Rules of Order? No, 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 just like ground this? rules, like, Change okay, so order. we say that we're going to talk about, you know, the future of zine, the zines, which is so vague, and I'm like, I'm the leader of the discussion because I play in this group and I have some ideas of what we should talk about, and I say, let's talk about printing press, some very specific thing, you know, so I help by focusing the conversation to begin with, and then I'm like, he's going to be the facilitator, so he's going to call on people in turn, so when you want to talk, raise your hand, then he'll call on you know, so that's kind of like helping it, you know, and stuff like that. So, but it takes experience. And so it's one of those things that the first, the more people use facilitation and use structure in their group, the more people get used to doing it because it's something that you can be good at. You can be good at participating in group discussions. You know, you can also be really bad at it. And it partly is like activist movements. The people involved there are like so much more better at it because they're used to it. They've been doing it for millions of years. You know, like when I went to active resistance. You know, it's like they use facilitation in every group, and then they had some of the structure. The group was structured in, the, structured in that the topic was focused, not like let's talk about gender and punk, well, which is so vague. Even if it's like vague, if you establish the fact that at the end of your discussion time you want to have talk about something meaningful or come up with certain points of interest or something, as you said, that helps. That helps people. Uh, away from repeating what someone else said and say, well, in my personal experience, I went through the same thing, but it was, I mean, unless that, unless that pertains to what the point is, but a lot of times people like to express their personal things, and they're just repeating what someone else has said, and it's not really contributing to an issue, and 
how she was going to teach us, and she basically said, this is what I'm here to talk about, this is what my background is, this is how I got involved and started doing what I do, and um, that was like a workshop where there was activities for us to follow up on, but I like the, like, you know, the question and answers at the end. I'm going to go make sure Bushman has excellent questions. Someone to bang their shoe on the table for work. Get her shoes. Yeah, I just break the table. Oh, no, my shoes wouldn't work for banging on the table. I have a heel. No, I have a heel. I want to get that Nikita Khrushchev thing working. Thank you. I like it. How to increase, it's how to ma not manage money, but it's like how to make more money and how to make your things sell better without spending money. You know, so it's like those kind of issues. So I don't know if that's clear. You can tell all your friends that's what I'm going to talk about. So advertising, not necessarily taking out ads and printing in your zine, but just no. getting your word out. But, I mean, it's like everything. Yeah, it's like, and I want to talk idea. about, yeah, the sponsorship yeah. idea, which I did with the yearbook, and then the whole, like, theoretical ideas of why, if you look at zines, all the ads are music-based ads, and that means that our zine is for its sustainability. Our culture is dependent on mu the music industry for its sustainability, which I think is ridiculous. And so I'm like trying to get away from that, even though I have music ads in my zine. But the thing is, <laughs> no, it's like because music, the way our community is structured is that the music industry part of it is the only kind of part of it that makes money and can't afford to advertise. Yeah. So what I'm going to talk about in the zine industry. No, that's right. I mean, it, it's incredible just the level, you know, the level of commerce at the zine level, the literature level versus music level. I mean, it, it's so far apart. It's such a huge difference. I mean, what about issues like be it bands or literature distribution that come from labels that are sponsored by giant corporations? Right. And, yeah. and there's that, and then there's like the if. Advertise okay, if these are dependent on advertising, which they are, to be sustain themselves and advertising only comes from the music industry, how much power does that give the music industry to control what can and can't be printed because of where they spend their advertising dollars? So that's what I think about. Those kind of 
That'd make you a scene. Yeah, it would. Because <laughs> I pretty much do my beat like this. That's in there. A lot of stuff because that's all I can sign in right. there. But four times a year we mail everybody, all the editors we deal with. We, if you wanted to give us a master copy of the flyer okay. or some smaller flyers or something, yeah. we could get them from all of the editors we deal with in one shot. That would be really good. Maybe they could be persuaded to just send stuff straight to you. Yeah, I'm going to. Um I've been thinking about that. I'm gonna make a, um, I'm gonna make a smaller flyer with the similar information. Yeah, like something like that, so that I can put, the, yes, to give to people like you and Discord and people have been really helpful. So that's probably the, the best part is like, people like you helping me out, you know, and like sending out things. And,